Alex Nitzberg, always glad to have you on our program as the theologian. And uh, Alex, we're very glad you've got your new uh, podcast, The Alex Nitzberg Show. We'll turn tune in and uh, uh, follow that on iTunes. And I uh, uh, hope uh, people listening will uh, download some uh, uh, some episodes and give it a review and uh, be a part of the Alex Nitzberg show because uh, here's a young man who is uh, smart and intelligent and into journalism. And Alex, today, let's talk about what's good and what's bad. Isaiah chapter, uh, what is it? Uh, five verse 20 says, woe unto them who call evil good and good evil. Uh, any of that going on in our society today, Alex Nitzberg, what do you say? Well, thank you for having me back on the show, Dr. White. I'm glad to be back. And yeah, so the topic I want to talk about today is calling evil good and good evil. And you've probably noticed that in America, we have this going on. We have people championing that which is evil as if it's good. And then people accusing people who are standing for what's just and good for doing something wrong as if what they're doing is evil. And I have a couple examples before I get into my specific example. Uh, abortion proponents, they argue that they're standing for a woman's right to choose and women's rights, you know, they use those terms and they say if you're against abortion, you're against women's rights and, you know, you're not for abortion rights. So they're twisting something. They're, they're taking you if you're anti-abortion, you're standing up for a, a child's right to live. And they're saying what you're doing is wrong and what they're doing is right. And when it comes to the LGBT agenda. We yeah, have a just, let me just uh, interject right there, because I think the uh, uh, the liberals have uh, far outpaced the conservatives on this in that they have taken even the language of society and uh, pro-choice and all that. I mean, that's, this sounds like a good thing. Obviously, we ought to let women be free. We ought to let uh, uh, we ought to let uh, people choose about their own bodies. And they have uh, just been brilliant, I would say. And and in one sense, in another sense, I would call it satanic, because this is the way the devil works always is, well, God didn't really say, right? And uh, uh, you, you know, the way the devil twists scripture and twists words uh, and uh, the, the liberal agenda has been very good at this. Sorry uh, to interrupt. Go ahead, Alex. Well, you're exactly right. Words are important and, and you can people change the conversation by they'll change the words they're using. Like they change like, you know, abortion or for, what, what, for instance, why don't why don't we call it something like baby killing or something? We call it abortion. And now they're calling it, you know, they've changed it to an argument. The argument's now not about abortion. It's about women's rights. And so you're right. They changed the terms. Uh, global warming became climate change. Words change when you're arguing about stuff sometimes. And it is interesting that that happens. Second and, example, and, and, second uh, example is the LGBT. Convenience, right? It seems like they change for great convenience, uh, for their own convenience. And uh, uh, to uh, call it uh, murder or baby killing or sodomy or whatever uh, terms uh, would be uh, politically incorrect. Go, go ahead. Right. Yeah. And so the second example, the LGBT movement, we got the same thing. It's being celebrated. Not only are they saying it's OK, but they're celebrating it in culture. Not everyone, but, you know, liberals and people are celebrating this movement. And if you're against it, if you say no, LGBT is a behavior, it's a sin, it's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong. Then you're hateful, you're intolerant. So they've taken what's evil and they're saying it's good. And if you're standing against what's evil, they're saying that you're evil. So but, but the specific thing I want to talk about today that just illustrates this because it's just so insane there's something called drag queen story hour. And it really is what it sounds like. It is drag queens, cross dressers, reading stories to children. And it's seriously dragqueenstoryhour.com. They have a website. And it, it's it's just such a stark illustration of calling evil good and good evil. I wish that uh, you were making this up, Alex. Uh, tell us <laughs> you got this on Babylon B, right? No, I did not. No, I didn't. It's not a satire thing. It's real. And yeah. And so it, the, the website, th this is a quote straight from the website. It says, DQSH, it's abbreviating Drag Queen Story Hour, captures the imagination and play of the gender fluidity of childhood and gives kids glamorous, positive, and unabashedly queer role models. In spaces like this, kids are able to see people who defy gen rigid gender restrictions and imagine a world where people can present as they wish, where dress up is real. And th this is really, I mean, this is what it is. It's, it's where cross-dressers go to read stories to children. They say that they go to schools, libraries, and bookstores. It seems like they go to a lot of libraries. But so one of the books that they've read at, at this event, at these events before, is a book called My Princess Boy, which was written by a woman named Cheryl Killo Davis. And the, the Facebook page for the My Princess Boy says, quote, My Princess Boy is a nonfiction picture book about acceptance. It is about our son who happily expresses his authentic self by dressing up in dresses and enjoying traditional girl things such as anything pink or sparkly. So 
some of the books they read at these events are also pushing a certain agenda. And according to their website, the DQSH Drag Queen Story Hour website, it says, created by Michelle T and Radar Productions in San Francisco, DQSH now happens regularly in LA, New York, and San Francisco, and events are popping up in other cities across the US, Canada, and the UK. Um, and actually, I believe Michelle T also created Radar Productions. And so I found out about Drag Queen Story Hour when I was reading an article on NBC Out, which is basically a pro-LGBT uh, section on NBC News' website. And the article was about like a drag queen convention and they had a kid zone at the drag queen convention. That's what this article was talking about. And apparently they had some sort of drag queen story hour thing at this event. So I read. Well, uh, if I might interrupt for just a moment, very much it seems an agenda going on among uh, the, uh, the, the gender fluidity crowd, an agenda to propagate this kind of thinking among children who who tend to be uh, rather concrete thinkers, uh, black and white and male and female and up and down. Uh, and yet uh, early on, this agenda to try to change that. Would you agree with that? I think that liberals want to train children to believe liberal things in pretty much any area. I mean, people, the Bible, when it was talking to Israel, it said, you know, train a child up in the way that he should go and he won't depart from it. Well, I think liberals also would like to train children to believe their ideology, just like conservatives and Christians want to train their children to believe the Bible. I mean, everybody. So, yeah, I think people want in this area and many areas, they want their children to believe whatever it is they want them to believe. So but I think, yeah, I think in schools um, we see in public schools some crazy stuff that happens with liberal ideology and things being taught. And that's not good. Um, and so, OK, but back to this. So. I found this on th this article on NBC out is talking about this kid. They have a kid zone at the drag convention. And I found out about this and th that article quoted Michelle T, the woman who started this whole drag queen story hour. She's quoted on there saying as a queer person who suddenly had a child, I realized quickly there was a lack of queer centered kids programming. I would go to a lot of story hours and things like that and just be in this really intensely straight environment. And I wasn't accustomed to being in straight environments. So that, that's interesting. That's the woman who's re largely responsible for, for creating this. So the fact that, first of all, anyone thought this was a good idea, I think that illustrates the, the upside down morality where evil is good and good is called evil in America. And then second of all, the fact that any parents think this is a good idea and actually bring their children to it. Because for instance, if it's being held at a library, someone's bringing their child to it. It's not like, you know, they're assaulting children like oh you're on this you know kid on the street we ha we're gonna force you to watch this like parents are thinking i'm gonna bring my child to watch this because this is a good idea so that verse in isaiah 520 where it's it, it uses the term woe unto them that call evil good and good evil i think that's applicable to the situation and it seems to describe what some liberals in america uh, believe and are pushing on society Amazing, uh, isn't it, what's going on today in that uh, liberal agenda in America, liberalism in America today. Thank you, Alex, uh, for uh, presenting that uh, to us. It really is, uh, I, I think, quite shocking, the, uh, the degree in which our society is, uh, to uh, use the words of Isaiah, putting darkness for light and light for darkness and bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter and, uh, and uh, male for female and female for male and on and on we can go, in which uh, uh, it, it, came, it came about, I think uh, you would agree with me, Alex, that that uh, uh, years ago, uh, when postmodernism set in, postmodernism had no absolute truth. And what we have today is just the chickens come home to roost, right? Well, I think one thing I would recommend is homeschooling. I like homeschooling, you know, because the public school system, we, we con there's like a constantly, there's a story here, there's a story there, you know, that they're teaching about Islam in public school, they're teaching weird gender stuff in public, whatever it is, or even just that they, they won't you know, teach about the Bible or something. So I was homeschooled for part of my schooling, and I definitely would recommend that Christians think about homeschooling their children if they can. I like homeschooling. I think it's a good thing. Amen. I totally agree with you. And I, I think the uh, public school system, uh, even if you've got good teachers there, and there are certainly some good public school teachers, and even if they happen to uh, be, uh, be be teaching a, a good lesson, the system as a whole is so ideologically driven, so phil philosophically driven, that uh, it's just impossible to come out untainted on the, on the whole thing, or a parent's going to have to do so much unteaching on the ideology that's there and the experimentation that's there. Uh, uh, John Dewey, I think, introduced this uh, to us. And so I certainly agree that homeschooling is uh, 
uh, an option that ought to be considered. And for those who want a good option on homeschooling, uh, go to jndarbyacademy.org, the John Nelson Darby Academy, uh, which of course uh, I, I started and lead. And I appreciate that little uh, unintended intro to that, Alex. Uh, uh, God bless you. Tell us uh, about uh, the Alex Nitzberg Show once again. Yeah, so the Alex Nisberg Show is an audio podcast. It's available now on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn. It should be available soon on Google Play. I got a notification that it was approved, but I don't see it on there yet. So if you just look it up, it's on Spreaker. There's a lot of different places you can listen to it. And if you look it up, it's got I've got an episode where I interviewed Alan West, Colonel Alan West. That was the most recent episode. And some, some other episodes, including an interview with uh, the director of Jihad Watch, Robert Spencer, John Guandolo from understandingthethreat.com and Dr. Peter Pry. We talked about the threat of EMPs, which we talked about on this show as well. So yeah, if you look it up and you like the show, I hope you will give me a review and subscribe on iTunes or one of those other sites. Excellent, uh, Alex, and some great uh, guests you had there. That's the Alex Nitzberg Show. It's N-I-T-Z-B-E-R-G. Look that up on iTunes or any of those uh, and uh, get some of those episodes and give him a, a, a good review. God bless you, Alex. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time on Ask the Theologian. Thank you, Dr. White.